the biggest way or the fastest way to get big in real estate is to start small. So a lot of people will come to me and they're like, look, I want to get into this game and they have big plans. And we're talking about multifamily uh, deals right now. So a lot of us are thinking like apartment buildings, hey, I want to get in, I want to get a 510 unit building. I want to build big cash flow and I want to do it all with one deal. And we're going to talk about literally a strategy that you can use in this multifamily space to build, you know, five, sometimes $10,000 a month in cash flow off of one deal. The fastest way to get where you want to go is actually to start small. When you're just getting started, you don't want to put yourself in that stress pressure cooker situation. You don't necessarily want to go out and quit your nine to five and jump into real estate because there's a lot of stress involved with that. That's um, kind of, to me, going big and you don't need to go big to win. To win, you need to start small get a, a smaller, maybe single family or a residential multifamily. Do a FHA house hack on a triplex, a quadplex, a duplex even, if it's the right uh, deal. And we'll talk about uh, kind of that unit mix and what makes the most sense uh, a little bit later in this session. Secret number one, why we're here for the multifamily secret. Secret number one is more units isn't always better. So this is a this is a tough lesson for a lot of us. When we think about multifamily, we think more units is better. So we think like, Brian, why would I buy the duplex versus the triplex or the quadplex? Isn't the, the duplex worse? Like three units is better than two. Four units is better than three, right? And the answer is not necessarily. Why is that? Well, from a developer standpoint, let's say I go into Philly. We'll just use Philly as an example. I'm going to a major city. It could be New York. It could be Texas. It could be Jersey. When you go up in units, the requirements on you from the city, from LNI, license and inspections, uh, from a permitting standpoint, from a zoning standpoint, from a square footage, how many, um, how much space needs to be provided per unit, it all increases, and it increases to the level where it's going to potentially cost you more money to build that property. And that could translate into a lower cash on cash return. So what, what's meant by that? Well, let's say I had a duplex or I had a property, it's multifamily zoned and I can build it into a duplex or a triplex. What do I build and why? Well, I'm going to look at first, okay, if I build this duplex, how many bedrooms can I get in it? Can I get more bedrooms in this duplex? versus the triplex. The duplex, I might be able to build a three bed, two bath over a three bed, two bath. Whereas the triplex, I'm at a two bed, one bath, and then a one, 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 one. Now, what am I really getting paid for in that duplex versus the triplex? I'm, I'm truly getting paid for, in a lot of areas, the bedrooms, how many beds are in there? Because the three bed rent is worth more than the one bed rent. So even if I have two one beds that each rent for 700 a month and a two bed that rents for 1200, so that's 14 and 12, that's um, what, 26? Well, 14, 12, well, yeah, 14 and 12, it's 26. Um, and then I'll have two threes that'll rent for 1400 a month or 1500 a month, that's 3000 coming in off the duplex. So I could have a straight up situation where the duplex cash flows more than the triplex. You also have to factor in the cost of the build. So what comes with every unit? A kitchen and a living room and potentially a, a, an additional bathroom. Am I getting paid for that kitchen? You don't get paid for kitchens in the rental business, in the landlord business. You get paid for bedroom size. How many people can live in there? So as I'm wasting money building more units, another kitchen, another living room, another bathroom that I didn't need, I'm also losing the square footage with that kitchen and with that living room. So I've lost square footage that could have been utilized for more bedrooms. So in this instance, more units is not better. I'm actually better off with the duplex because I'm getting more cash flow and I'm spending less money on the construction because I don't have to build that extra kitchen. That extra kitchen might cost me $15,000. So from a cash on cash return standpoint, I'm spending more getting less cash flow. That's like bizarre, right? You don't want to do that. You're hustling backwards. 
but a lot of us are brainwashed through what we're being fed that more units is better and more units is just not better really fast if you're enjoying the content make sure you like and subscribe to this channel and leave a comment in the comment section that says i subscribed for everyone who leaves that comment i'm going to send you instant access to my free real estate training that shows you how to acquire properties for pennies on the dollar all across the country you don't want to miss out on that free offer also there are going to be different requirements like hey if you're building the duplex you don't have to put in a sprinkler system but once you go to three units or once you go to four units, now you got to put in a sprinkler system because there's more people in that house. And if a fire happens, there need to be more safety protection um, or prevention mechanisms within the property. So now I'm spending money on a sprinkler. Is there any value? You, could, you may be able to argue, eh, there's some value to that kitchen. There's definitely not a lot of value. I mean, it will protect the asset, reduce your insurance costs, but the insurance might be, you're talking about reducing insurance costs from 1600 a month to, I mean, uh, 1600 a year to 1200 a year. Like that's not really anything in this game, but the sprinkler system costs 40 grand. There's not enough value in putting that sprinkler into the property to outweigh maybe the cash flow. So you have to factor in all of these things. This is why knowledge, why, why I try to focus um, with you guys on knowledge and not wow factors of real estate. Like this isn't about marketing to you guys. This is truly, real estate education. These are the things that you need to think about and the level that you have to think at when you're doing your deal analysis, because you're going to be put in a position to decide. If you're in the one-on-one -on -one mentorship program, I'm going to help you with that decision. You're going to come to me and say, Brian, what should I build? And I'm going to be having this type of conversation with you. Here's what you should build and why. Here are the different wrinkles. Here's how we should do it. We should sectionate this. We should market rent this. We should room rent this. We should do co-living. We're going to start to break down options but ultimately i'm doing this line of thinking with you and this process with you so that you become a free thinking investor so that you can look at a deal and then make those decisions and say this is what i want to do and this is why that this is what gives you the confidence to continue to march forward in this game this is what gives you the competitive advantage the ability to outthink the competition the ability to outthink other investors is where the money is made. This is the difference between the developers who stay in the business and the ones who flunk out. The ones who can't think flunk out. The ones who can think outthink the flunkies. They outthink them and they and they uh, outproduce them. So more is not always better. You have to think about the actual costs involved in getting more units and if the cash flow outweighs those costs. Often it doesn't. So a lot of people will find me maxing out a duplex six beds six baths in a 2500 square foot duplex and they're like it's three stories brian why didn't you build the triplex that's why watch this again rewind it watch it again take some notes and you'll understand why and then when you start to crank the numbers on your end you'll start to see whoa that kind of makes sense that was counterintuitive guys um if that was valuable for you like comment subscribe leave a comment that says i subscribe also uh, so I can send you that free uh, training, but also share the content with somebody who you want to get that value as well.